Welcome to another episode of David's Ark, where we highlight awesome organizations, people, and places working to protect animals and the environment. Today we are just north of San Francisco in Sausalito, California at the Marine Mammal Center. This is an incredible organization that rescues, rehabilitates, and releases back into the wild sick or injured marine mammals. Also, it gets a little chilly around here. The nice folks here told me to wear some layers. I hope that I wore enough. Uh, I am a little chilly. My buddy James, he didn't, he didn't really uh, get the memo, I'm sorry, but uh, he's, gonna, he's a strong man. We're going to get through this. We're going to have some fun. Let's go. He knows what he's doing. Man, I, I have too many layers right now. Let me, uh, let me, I need to disrobe. Okay. Ah, there's one. Ah. Showbiz, baby. This is showbiz right here. <sighs> All right, so we are heading to the fish kitchen. Uh, this is where like a thousand pounds a day of sustainably caught herring is made into a smoothie. Kind of sounds like a nightmare, but uh, we're going to head in there. Oh, man. Woo. My wife's worst nightmare here. She hates fish. This is right here. So, Mike, are you a volunteer or are you... I am a volunteer. What a nice guy, volunteering his time and touching fish. This is a good man right here. The smoothies are over there, right? That's right. The milkshakes okay. are over there. Milkshake, oof, that's... A little fish milkshake, that is... Ooh. All interviewers are required to, <laughs> yeah, you to gotta, taste. <laughs> and by the way, can we really quick... This is Giancarlo Rulli, head hey of PR and media here. One, one of, yeah, one of he's, our two main PR people here at the center. He's the man. First of all, can we just get a picture of those eyes? Incredible eyes. That's, that, those are eyes for television. Also, he's, he's really... I feel like I try to, you know, groom myself well. That is that is some amazing grooming on the on the on the facial hair. I do my this, best. This, right. Is this Dr. Emily? Or is this Dr. Emily. Dr. Emily Whitmer? Everyone, give her a hand. All the, no, I'm not no? different doctor. How many Dr. That's Emilys fine. do we have? Uh, everyone is Dr. Emily here. I. I am Dr. Emily. <laughs> this is Dr. Emily as well. Yes, um, hi. We're all. I'm Dr. Emily. Nice to meet you, Dr. Emily. <laughs> tall, Dr. tall Dr. Emily. Okay, so you are Emily. I am. The, so I'm a volunteer you're a volunteer. Here. So these are, wow, that looks delicious. Those are the. the Wait till you smell what's about to come oh, out of the microwave. By, by the way, microwaving fish in any workplace should be banned. Can we all agree on that in yeah, the workplace at lunchroom? In the seven in the morning. I mean, here you guys have to, but like, you know, if you're at work and someone's microwaving leftover fish. Right now we also have a lot of really, really young elephant seals, and they're not able to eat fish because they should be nursing right now, but for whatever reason they've been separated from their mother. So that's where the fish milkshake that we're dishing out comes in. So they actually... Sorry. <laughs> Are you having trouble continue. with the fish Continue. No, you're good. You're good. Continue. My, <laughs> We're all used to the smell now. There's Keep a it smell. rolling, baby. Keep <laughs> it rolling. <laughs> There's a smell in here, yeah. and it's nothing compared to the smell out there in the pen. So they will be tube fed, which means that we actually feed a tube down the throat of the animal, and then using syringes like this giant thing, um, kind of pipe fish milkshake directly into their stomach because they're not they're not yet old enough and prepared to digest whole fish on their own. They'll actually be tubing me. Um, is what oh, that's I, amazing. I, is that? So <laughs> flail around a little bit. Make your restrainer work. Perfect. Yeah, I know. I got my, I got my wiggle ready. <laughs> okay, I'll be fighting it. I will be fighting that tube. I do not want the tubing. We're making it happen. Oh, yeah. Pull it off. Am I, should I pull it all the way? Go all the way? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That is just right on in there. Yep. Oh. Honey, I know what we're having for dinner. I got bringing home a fish smoothie. And are you Emily as well? You know what? We're a family. We're all Emily here. When you're here, you're Emily. We are about to go into the fish freezer, guys. And then, oh. this is where we thaw the fish that the animals so, eat the herring. We mark it with the date and the time because we want to make sure we're using the freshest fish first. Yeah. And we have to get it out of the deep freeze. Ooh, so this is the thaw area, and this, this is, is the, hot. this is, this is war. Oh, Mike, this is where I need the layers going in there. Wow. This is the deep freeze. Oh, wow. Come on in. Oh, hypothermia. Weather's fine. Woo! 
That is. So this is the deep freeze. So we I get feel squid. That. Yeah. We get clams. We mostly feed the sea lions and the elk. Everything's sustainable. And our most picky eaters are the otters. Oh yeah, of course. So those are the ones we have to take good care of. They need the uh, the the little bit of spice on the the mahi mahi. They're, yeah, they're they're sophisticated <laughs> eaters. Oh man, that is I just like thirty seconds in there. On a hot day, it's good. Oh, woo, ah, woo. My pants are frozen. I have frozen pants. All right, so we got to wear boots. We got to be sanitary. Um, hope they have a size seventeen boot for me. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> What's gonna go with my outfit? I think these are gonna be. That noise you're hearing in the background is they're the uh, northern elephant seals. Northern elephant seals, yep. and that's been used in in movies, right? Yeah, we've actually we've had uh, multiple different sound folks come out uh, to film. Most notably, How to Train Your Dragon, uh, the Orc Eye in Lord of the Rings. Lord of the as Rings, well. my all-time favorite. They dubbed film. it down, and what you'll hear behind the scenes is that. The northern elephant seals, in terms of their vocalization pitch, is quite varied. Yeah. Um, it's not consistent necessarily to say like a California sea lion, which is more of a, a low bark. Yeah. Um, although there's variation between the pups and the adults. So I think in terms of the vocalizing, it's the thing that you can hear coming up the front steps right away. Yeah. And it gives the most opportunity to mix down some of that sound into something that can be turned into something yeah. else. What is your name? Debbie. Debbie, nice yeah, to meet you. Nice what is what you. was your role here, Debbie? Uh, just the volunteer. I feed the fish, hand feed them. I do fish school. Those are the animals that don't know how to eat fish, mm -hmm. and so I teach them how to eat fish nice. so they can get released. These are full of salt tablets and vitamins. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure each animal gets that. Okay. And then, after we know that, we, this is their food. These guys are f what they're called free feeders. Yeah. We can dump it in, and they will eat it. Yeah. They don't need me to help them. Yeah. Right. And that board is so that they don't make eye contact or don't think of that humans giving them food. Also to protect us oh, yeah, from that being too. bit. Yeah, yeah. That's probably also the important, big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! Oh man! <laughs> Whoa! Oh man! <laughs> Get some. The wooden hat tags are great because it's just stuck on the head with a non-toxic uh, adhesive mm -hmm. and so that'll just naturally fall off in the wild oh, nice. and it's made out of wood so it's yeah. not like a plastic or anything that is going to cause ocean pollution of some sort. Yeah, no. so we're not going to go swimming in there. So we are not going to go We're not going to, okay. So the skill of the volunteers is, is really huge. We have yeah. over 1,200 active volunteers here at the Marine wow. Mammal Center. Yeah, so they're, they're the lifeblood. They're really the backbone of what this organization is all about. We, yeah. we couldn't do... The work here is a teaching hospital and, um, you know, incredible. an ocean conservation here without them. This guy's playing some defense here. We got Giancarlo playing defense. It's a little guy rolling over here, We're sliding. Giancarlo's playing defense. He's got the board. Oh, yeah. Shifting to the right. He knows what he's doing. Oh, he wants to talk. Uh oh, he's trying to get over the top. We got a guy. He want he wants some camera time. Luke, Luke is just in it. Oh, now we got two. We got help. We got double help. Now we got two. Wow, we have a triple board action. We got Giancarlo. We got two volunteers. Oh man, everyone's moving and grooving. Wow, that is they're creating a wall. Oh man. Whoa. Ooh. Hello. Okay. Oh yeah. That is crazy. We're shifting around. All right, uh, so I think they're trying to lead them up the ramp into the water, I think, so that they can eat. I think that is the purpose. He doesn't want to go in the water. They know there's vitamins. They don't want those vitamins. They don't want that medicine, those vitamins. They've been tricked one too many times. Oh, Debbie's giving a little push. You don't want to mess with Debbie. We got to clean off. This is for uh, make sure you don't get the bacteria going all over the place. So 
Legit, Emily, what are we doing What here? is going on? So right now, we have a team of people who are tube feeding mm -hmm. baby elephant seals. Elephant seals, for their first month of life, are supposed to be nursing and basically doubling their weight. They gain a ton of weight in the first month. But if they're separated from their mother, of course, they can't nurse. And there are a variety of reasons why that happens. It may be human interference, the mother gets scared away, or the mother cannot find food. As the climate gets warmer, fish are moving into colder waters, which means farther away from the shore. So seals are having to go farther out in order to get food. So sometimes the mothers just can't make it back. So we are kind of trying to be surrogate mothers to them in a way. So we're doing tube feeding here, and what is required is that one person restrain an animal, then another person actually inserts a tube down the animal's throat and sort of pumps in some of this specially formulated fish milkshake Sounds that we like make fun. for them. Sounds like a fun Friday night. Oh my God, it's amazing. <laughs> you get covered in poo, yeah. you get covered in fish, you have fish in your and you're, hair. You do this for free, you're I a volunteer. What a hero. So what, she us, chooses to do that for free. All of us do it for free. All, that is I think amazing. every one of us loves it. So even though you're restraining, it's not hurting the animal. It's, We're really careful, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely, we try to introduce as little anxiety as yeah. possible. As we said, these are really young animals. These yeah. are babies, basically. Yeah. So, of course, they are scared by humans sort of climbing on top of them and interacting with them. Yeah. And we do have to sort of straddle the animal, not with our weight, but sort of on our knees over mm -hmm. top of the animal in order to restrain it. Mm -hmm. So, of course, that can be anxiety provoking, but we yeah. try really hard to be as gentle as we possibly can, mm -hmm. never do any damage to the animal. Mm -hmm. And we kind of try to do it quickly so that it's also just sort of an in and out. So this is the real, this is the real Dr. Sweet. Emily. So what, what's happening here? What's going on? So we have a few elephant seal um, babies that we're going to recheck this morning. Our primary treatment for these animals is food and fluid. So the vast majority of these animals, the elephant seal wieners, have come in because they're too skinny. So she's a true professional because she was able to say elephant seal wiener and not laugh at all. She was right there. It was perfect. Oh, yeah. Well done. <laughs> very professional. For these animals, one of them had a very low white blood cell count, which can be suggestive of some sort of infectious disease in the body. Mm -hmm. So if we find that we have an abnormal white cell count, we may be starting some antibiotics. Well, my team of um, visitors and students and professionals is getting started um, bringing this animal to an area where we can restrain it safely and then get a blood sample so you guys will okay. be able to observe that whole process. Now is this a dirty pen or a clean pen? Because I'm seeing both. Mix mix signals. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Both dirty and clean. It's yeah. Yeah. it's a paradox. This is a paradox. Why don't you get your caddy? You head in and just get you on a board for a What's a caddy? Is this are we playing so, golf or what's happening? <laughs> this is our uh, exam. We call it our exam caddy. We have all the equipment and supplies we need for a routine physical exam. Yes. Wow. Look at that. That is. <laughs> got it all. We got it all. And the, and the four irons underneath there, right? With the golf balls? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> we got the SWAT team board ready to go. Oh, sorry, oh my goodness. Okay. See that guy over there? He's eyeing me. I think he thinks I have some fish. He smelled me from the fish kitchen. He thinks I have food. So what was happening there? What was going on? It looks serious. This animal is looking pretty good to me. It's um, bright and alert, cackling, making that noise. That's a normal vocalization for them. That was actually them. me, but uh, yeah. Sorry, I got confused yeah. <laughs> for a second there. <laughs> um, listen to heart and lungs, looks, sounds good. Palpated or felt the abdomen, um, all that feels good. Um, we got a blood sample, so we'll recheck that white blood cell count. And what does their skin feel like? Because I'm looking at it, it seems like it, it feels fun. Like I was tempted to just give it's, a rub, but it, I'm, I don't want to get kicked out. Yeah, you, you would get kicked out. So way to, way to I, yeah. hold on to your impulses I know, there. I know what um, I'm doing here. It is, it is odd. I don't quite know how to describe it. So they do have fur, mm -hmm. but it feels really um, dense. Like, you know, like when you pet a pit bull that doesn't have, yes. uh, it's not fluffy. Yeah. Um, and their skin's a little rubbery. Mm. Yeah. It's tough skin. Like a, like a wet, dense, rubbery pit bull. Yeah. Yeah. That cackles. He said there's a chance I could get bit. Okay. Wow. Look at that. C7. Okay, you guys can get down and make yourself low. Okay. Yeah. Get low. Get low. Oh, work the glutes. 
Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to have both of you guys slide down with me here. Into the corner, into the corner. Oh, into the corner, okay. <sighs> Am I not supposed to look at them in the eyes? Um, so, in terms of, like, habituation, right, it's mm -hmm. best just with all wildlife, uh, especially to not look, stare at them directly in the eyes. Okay. I mean, the big thing here at the Marine Mammal Center is just making sure that we're limiting the amount of human interaction yeah. with the animals as possible. Definitely. And that's just done, as tough as it is, as a person that's volunteered here for 15 years and now is, you know, still volunteering but also on staff, mm -hmm. you get you do get connected to the, to the animals yeah. um, that you're caring for, and especially their stories and the trials and tribulations of where they've come from to get here but yeah. the end goal is getting them back out to their ocean home and yeah. that's what we want to have happen survived go giants that's great here at Marine Mammal Center, we welcome people from all over the planet to come yeah. learn with us here. Um, I've got some vet tech students, a vet student as you met, um, and so we're teaching how to do these skills. So the two people you guys you saw draw blood earlier, they're people who are just here to learn. Yeah. Um, my job is to coach them through it. So this is our um, current live patient research projects board. So this shows you every sample that a researcher, either here at the Marine Mammal Center or external, has requested for us to collect from live animals. See, that looks like someone's butt brushed against that. That was, Blue, can we see this? Can we see, that's a butt brush right there. That is clearly someone butt brushed that. And now... Did you, did you want your opportunity to leave your mark on the Marine Mammal Center? I mean, it'd be an honor. It would be a real, can I give it a little, uh, a little bit of this? No? Cara Field, um, our staff veterinarian, is doing a project to understand how well one of our pain medications um, is processed in the blood and how long it might last in the blood, so that when we prescribe a pain medication, we know whether it has a chance of working and how long. Yeah. So we're getting uh, extra blood samples from any patient that's on that pain medication so we can evaluate how well it's working. So that's an example of a patient that would be benefiting from its time here in care getting pain relief, but then also contributing to science yeah. um, just by giving it a little extra drop of blood. Yeah, and she's um, studying demoic acid in sea otters. Demoic acid is a um, marine toxin that's produced by a um, uh, pseudonychia. It's a marine algal. Ocean gets warmer. This diatom blooms. We have these huge blooms of pseudonychia. Mm. They produce a toxin. It accumulates in the food, like in the fish, and then it causes neurologic disease in our patients. And it can affect humans too. It causes something called amnesic shellfish shell. Can't say that. Uh, you know what? You, but you yep. hit you hit the yeah. other one. The, yeah. the other one was good. So <laughs> I don't do human, so I don't know how to pronounce no, hey, their problems. No, the other one was harder, and you nailed it. So we're gonna. That, you still get credit. That's all okay, good. Okay, good credit. Yeah. As human beings, we have a lot of responsibility for the trouble that our ocean is in. Yeah. And if I can dedicate my career to uh, even addressing small portions of that, or trying to understand small portions of it, so that as a as a community of humans that we can make a difference, that's my well, that's, that's my driving goal. And that's a good point because a lot of people, like, they love sea otters or sea lions, and they, they, but they don't always make the connection that the way we treat our ocean has an effect on those animals that we supposedly love so much. So Absolutely. the more that we have healthy oceans that are clean and not too warm, et not cetera. Too warm, no, uh, not too much plastic. It, yeah, so making that connection of like the things that we do to the ocean and our planet affects those cute animals that we love so much. Yes. Can we all give a hand for Dr. Emily? Oh, thank you. The real Dr. Emily. No, no. This is the real thing, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank, thank me, you. thank me. It's all me, it's really all me. I, I thank you guys. All right, so we are here with, it, this is Adam. Ad, what's your full name? My name's Adam Ratner. I'm the guest experience manager. We're open to the public here, right? Correct. So the Marine Mammal Center, it's the world's largest marine mammal hospital and education facility. So we're open to the public essentially every day. And this is, um, who, is who do we have here? This is Elmo, Elmo. right here. The little, the little babies that we, were, that we saw in there, this is what they become. 5,000 pounds, 15 yes. feet long. Quite a nose there too. It is, it makes me feel better about my own actually. <laughs> um, this is actually all from a story of a whale. Unfortunately, this whale had washed up on the beach. It had already passed away. But we wanted to figure out why. We don't normally see sperm whales. Mm -hmm. So we sent our team of researchers out there. We looked at this whale, didn't have any cuts, didn't have any scratches, it looked fine. But when we looked inside the whale's stomach, we did an animal autopsy. We actually found over 400 pounds of trash. Wow. 
And we worked with a pair of local artists to actually build this ghost net monster out of some of the trash from the whale's stomach. So this is the this was actually in the whale's stomach. Yeah, it's been cleaned, but all these different nets. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say that yeah. might be oh. Uh, oh. And yeah. even the nets that you're seeing are actually made out of plastic. Um, really? And the problem with it is oh, that yeah, plastic just it. lasts forever. Yeah. So yeah. it's an amazing invention, to be honest with you. But we use it in a way that we kind of dispose of Not a great it. invention if it's inside your stomach. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the, we use something for two seconds, five minutes, but then it will last forever. So any action we can take to reduce our use of plastics, whether it's different types of netting when we're using fishing or whether it's things like bringing your own bags and bottles, makes a big difference yeah. since we know that that stuff has to go somewhere. And a lot of it, unfortunately, can get out to the ocean and be a threat to these animals. Yeah. So climate's a big issue that we see here around the center in terms of the impact of climate change. And one of my favorite things is we've got this big food web up here that kind of shows how we're all connected. Because again, no matter where you live, we're connected to the ocean. The food we eat, the air we breathe, the ocean actually helps control and regulate our climate, kind of like the heart. Yeah, of the definitely. of the earth system. Yeah. We use solar here at the center and this is going to allow us to offset around $20,000 worth of our energy bill. So yeah. it saves money, provides shade for the animals, which is good for their health, but yeah. also is drastically reducing the amount of fossil fuels that we use. Yeah. Even our food that we eat, where does it come from? How far does it travel? Just yeah. skipping one meat dish a week yeah. is like driving 1,200 miles less. Wow. And right. even like, you know, you go to the, the parking lot now, they put the shade, instead of just having a, a just a, a, a tin roof, put the solar panels on there, you're powering the whole mall and you're getting some good shade. Yeah, it's win -win. a win-win. It's a win-win and that's win -win. what's great about I took the right. I, I took the words right out of his mouth. You did. See, you already know so much here. I'm, I am. I Actually, I'm taking your job. There you I go. am, Perfect. Adam, I don't, I didn't want to inform you this, but I am now I'm, the, the head, uh, what is the job? Title? I have not actually told you all that I do. So you you are a lucky man in terms of what you get to take over. You can see some of our volunteers in the back that are actually preparing, getting ready to feed those fish milkshakes to yeah. all of our patients. And this is something we will always have volunteers up here to share these stories because so rarely do you have a chance to see something like an elephant seal up close. Yeah. But they also have these rich stories. The fact that these are babies. Yeah. They, they're born at 75 pounds. They're that's crazy. huge. That is, that's got to be a tough thing to birth. I feel for the mother. We have the solar panels. By the way, if you're in uh, Northern California, Tyler Rodriguez Electric, my brother-in-law, he, he does solar panels. Hit him up. <laughs> I was told that this used to be a missile... Uh, testing site or what, what, what were they doing? Not a missile testing site, but where we're standing used to have Nike missiles. So everything out here in this and national park. And this is not park, Nike like the swoosh. This correct. is correct. It was one of the things during kind of the Cold War and during World War II where really this entire area was a military fortress. Do we know? We don't know what a Nike missile is. It's a large missile. It's a large missile. That's what missile. I can tell. Okay, you. that's yeah. it. Causes big damage. <laughs> and the Reebok missiles, they were cool for a little while, and then they Probably went out of style. Lesser quality, and, yeah, lesser thing, quality. Yeah. And then, yeah, lots of different ways for people to connect with us, whether it's school groups that come on site. We've got summer camps as well. Yeah, I actually, when I was a child, I, I went on a field trip and my mom took me here as well. Here, I grew up in this area. Oh, nice. Now I'm, I'm exiled to L.A. now, but I, I am a native of, of Marin and Sonoma County. So I, I remember it was, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a great experience for kids. Can I be honest? And I can't be the only one in, that has done this for a long time. I never knew the difference between an elephant seal and a sea lion. Uh, easiest way to remember it though, sea lions are like lions. Lions okay. have ears, lions have big front paws. Seals are kind of like big fat sausages. Okay. <laughs> sausages don't have ears, sausages don't walk around up on land. The elephant seals though, one of the reasons I love them is they are deep diving ocean yeah. animals. These guys go on the longest migration of any mammal in the world. Wow, so how, they swim how far do they go? California to Alaska and back twice a year. Wow. Yeah. So we've got a website, marinemammalcenter.org, Facebook and Twitter that share our stories, even virtual programs. So anyone around the world can actually connect with us through wow. the virtual programs that we offer nice. and really get those, whether they're for schools or adults, and help connect to see how they might be part of the story. And what are the, what are the handles? What are the, the, the Twitter, Facebook? Uh, Marine it, Mammal Center. We, Marine make it, Mammal we make it really easy. They got, yep. they got the handles. Exactly. Early adopters. If you are... In the from Fort Bragg to San Luis Obispo, exactly, right? Yeah. If you find an animal, a marine mammal in need, injured or sick or lost, yep. anything that needs help, anything that needs help, um, even if it's their SAT test they have coming up, whatever they need, you call. What's the number? Yeah, so we've got a 24 hour hotline 415 289 SEAL. 
And that's how we find all of the animals. We'll rescue anywhere from 700 to close to 2,000 animals a year. And it's yeah. because of people on the beach that let us know. So we get our team of volunteers out there and help rescue them. Got a little climate change mug. So what is what's going on here? So, so you pe you peel the film. Yeah. So basically, what happens is it changes as you put hot water into it. Okay. Um, so you see sea level rise happen oh, um, oh, as wow. there's more things. Oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a way to visualize yeah. potentially some of the things happening. That'd in be a funny bit if you just like. Way. You just put like a like a little thing that releases exhaust into it. As you put water it in, really the exhaust help with goes that and taste, yeah, like really bring out the flavor. Yeah. Now, now you'll see what the fish are dealing with. All right, here's your climate change mug. This is a uh, it's a knife. What is it? It's a shank. This is a sustainably sourced shank. <laughs> of course, in case yeah. you're in trouble. Yes, <laughs> these are uh, bamboo utensils. Yeah. So this is a simple set that you can keep in a bag, keep at your desk, wherever oh, nice. you are, that allow you to use these things over and over again so that yeah. you're not throwing away plastic forks every single time you get takeout or something right. like that. The bees wrap over here can replace things like Ziplocs and different like plastic a, like bags. A, like a rap song sung by bees or what is yes. this? Okay. That's what has really gotten that name recognition <laughs> yeah. up there. How does the rap go? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not falling for that one. <laughs> All right, so I think we've we've come to the end of this wonderful journey. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Giancarlo. You it, the work they do here is so important. Please donate, call that number if you see a marine mammal in need, visit, educate the kids. I, I, I'm, I'm proof of a child who came and although I still didn't quite know the difference between an elephant seal and a sea lion, it still made an impact and, and, and it really is important work that they're doing here. So please support these guys, support Dr. Emily, the whole, the whole crew. It's really been an amazing experience. Well, pleasure to have you out here, David. We, we count on folks like you to come out and help tell the story and uh, to be able to get that story out to the wider community is is really what we want to be able to do here and it's part of our mission yeah well thank you and bring it in guys group hug <laughs> this has been beautiful david's ark right in front of elmo here marine right? mammal center in elmo it's it's a beautiful thing thank you guys thank you of course